Hello everyone. Today's video is about adding lighting to an AMT model of the Star Trek Klingon battlecruiser. Actually, it's about the process of adding lighting to models in general, but AMT's Klingon cruiser kit provides a very good example of the overall process. This video is not linked to any specific article on the SciFiDragon.net website, but does relate to the how-to article titled Adding Punch to UFOs in Spaceships. This is not a build video. It's a how-to video focusing on adding lighting to a model. So I won't be doing any step-by-step -step kit assembly on camera. Every modeler has their own techniques and their own preferences for the materials they use. The process in this video is only one of many ways to install lighting in a model. Newer or novice model builders may be asking, my kit builds into a great looking model right from the box. Why do the extra work to add lighting? Simply put, lighting adds an extra dimension of realism to your model. For example, here's a short clip of the TOS Enterprise. We all know this is a model filmed in a studio, but the flashing navigation lights and swirling engine nasals add a sense of energy and make it look more realistic. The illuminated windows create the illusion that there are people inside and complete the illusion that we're seeing a real space vessel, not a six foot long studio model. To a lesser degree, lighting a model kit produces the same illusion. The effect works particularly well with sci-fi models, but model railroaders have known for ages that lighting buildings and street lamps on a railroad layout brings the scene to life. That covers the issue of why you would want to light up a model and brings us to the question of how to do it. Lighting a model kit is not as difficult as some may think. Of course, the time and effort needed to light a model depends on the size of the model and how complex you want your lighting effects to be. For this demo, I'll be installing simple static lighting. No flashing lights, no color changes, or other animated features. To begin, examine the parts of your model kit. Decide where you want to install lighting and determine if there's enough space inside your model to hold the lighting. Also, cross-check the instructions. Make sure there won't be any internal kit parts that might interfere with the lighting you want to install. Likewise, be sure your lighting assembly won't obstruct kit parts and prevent proper assembly of the kit. The key to model lighting is the common LED. However, today's LEDs are anything but common. There are all sorts of sizes, shapes, and colors available. For those of you who aren't familiar with LED technology, here's a quick look at some of the LEDs useful for lighting models and full-scale prop replicas. There are large LEDs, like these 8mm and 10mm diameter examples. By the way, regardless of size, LEDs come in a variety of colors, as well as white light. Tinted LEDs give off the color of their casings. That is, a red colored LED gives off red light, a green one gives off green light, and so on. Some LEDs come in clear casings. Unlike tinted or colored LEDs, clear cased LEDs don't rely on the tint in the plastic to produce their colors. The diodes actually give off different colors themselves. A clear white light looks the same as a clear red LED or a clear blue LED until you light them up. These are medium sized 5 millimeter LEDs. Of course, these come in colors as well as producing white light. There are clear and frosted varieties. Frosted LEDs are handy if you want to produce a softer lighting effect. Another thing you should know about these basic round LEDs is that the domed top of an LED is actually a lens that focuses the light and directs it forward. The lenses are not all the same some disperse the LED's light over an arc of 30 degrees, 
Others confine the light emission to an arc of only 14 degrees, and so on. You need to check the dispersal range when you buy LEDs so that the light will remain as focused as you need it to be. Small LEDs include simple round types like these 3 mm diameter samples. Tube-tipped LEDs like these provide a very small light emitting area of only 2 mm. Very handy when you need to get LEDs into a very small space. Not all LEDs have a lens at the front and are round. This is a sample of various sizes and colors of flat LEDs with rectangular front ends. These come in handy for projects like lighting up a full-scale replica of a Star Trek Next Generation tricorder, or any model where you need something other than a round lighting source. There are also square LEDs. These come in various sizes and colors like every other LED. And again, like the rectangular LEDs, they're handy in situations where a round LED wouldn't be appropriate. Specialty LEDs include ones with shaped tops, like this one with a wedge-shaped light emitting area. Special purpose LEDs include various pre-mounted units. These LED blocks can be handy when building full-scale prop replicas. The block on the left, the white one, is great for Star Trek Next Generation phasers where they can be used for the light-up power scale. Lastly, there are specialty LEDs that produce more than one color of light. These come in clear, round or flat housings and can generate two or three colors. Shown is an RGB LED. Connected through a selector switch, the single LED lets you choose from red, green, or blue light. Two color LEDs come in various combinations like red and yellow, red and green, or green and yellow, and so on. Except for navigation lights under the warp nacelles, I only have to light the front end of the cruiser, including the command deck and small area at the back of the boom section. Okay, let's get started lighting this Klingon cruiser. The first step in lighting this model is to examine the front end and locate all the little windows that are only depicted by raised circles on the hull. These small windows have to be opened up so light will come through. A pin vise drill with a number 60 wire bit will do this job quickly and cleanly. After drilling all the windows, check the openings and lightly sand off any burrs left behind by the drill. Don't forget to also drill out the windows at the back of the boom section. There are three on each side. Now, examine the cruiser's command section. Locate and drill out all the windows along the front. My next step was to use small pieces of styrene sheet plastic and small sections of plastruct U-beams to create mounts to hold the LEDs that will light up each of the front sections of the cruiser. The sheet plastic and plastruct form are joined by plastic welder. Now, depending on the model you're building and where you're putting your LEDs, you may not need to build mounts. In this case, they are needed to align my LEDs in the front sections of the cruiser. Test fit your LED mounting boards to be sure they fit in the space that you want to light up. Also, check that they'll keep your LEDs at the height and in the direction that you want them. Adjust the size of the board or the shape of the board as necessary. You may want to try this test fit both before and after adding the LEDs and their wiring to the mounting boards. Okay. A quick word about the LEDs I selected to light my model. For both the main forward section and the upper command area, I'm using clear, flat, 
two millimeter white LEDs. These are very bright and unlike round LEDs that focus their light forward, these spread light in all directions. Because these bright little LEDs spread light in all directions, I only need two of them to light the front and sides of each section of the cruiser. Later, I'll install a battery holder in the aft section of the cruiser. To connect the LEDs from the front of the model to the battery and to an on-off switch, I'll have to run wires through the narrow boom area. There's not much space inside the boom, so I want to keep the number of wires running through it to a minimum. To do this, I join the positive LED leads to each other and the negative leads to each other. This lets me run only one positive wire and one negative wire from each of the two LED mounts through the boom, a total of four wires. If you run a separate wire for each LED, you end up with a total of eight wires, and that would be difficult to fit in the boom. Because of the limited space in the boom area, I chose to use very fine motor wrapping wire to connect the LEDs to their power source. Once I've soldered the wires to the LED leads, I cover them with heat shrink. While this provides insulation, it also supports and protects the thin, fragile wires and helps prevent them from snapping while they're being moved around during the process of connecting them to the battery. This next step is optional. The main forward hull area has windows all around, going all the way back to the boom section. To ensure more uniform lighting, I added one 5 millimeter white LED facing the rear of the LED mount. This will provide a little extra light for the back end of this forward hull section. Here's a sneaky little trick. The additional LED does not need its own wires to connect to the battery. See the photo. I simply soldered the 5 millimeter LED's positive lead to the positive lead from the 2 millimeter flat LED's. And of course, I soldered the negative lead from the 5 millimeter LED to the flat LED's negative lead. This eliminates the need for another set of wires. To complete the lighting for the main hull area, I need to add one more LED. I'm adding a single 2 millimeter flat LED lined up with the windows at the rear of the boom section. This LED will be added into the circuit powering the main forward section's LEDs. The following diagrams show you how to do this. This is what the completed wiring for the boom section LED looks like. The next step is simple, but very important. Light from the LEDs will come right through the plastic hull of this model. To prevent this, you have to black out the inside of the parts where the LEDs are installed. First, mask off the outside of the hull to prevent accidental overspray. Then spray two coats of flat black on the inside of the hull. You can use canned spray or an airbrush for this. I actually used Krylon Indoor Outdoor Flat Black spray paint. Once the blackout paint has completely dried, install the lighting models in the cruiser's hull. See the photos for details.
Next, install the LEDs in the command section. Make sure to run the wires down through the opening at the bottom of the command section's lower half. Now, assemble the top and bottom parts of the command section. Then, run the wires from the command section through the opening on the top of the main forward hull area. Run the wires from the command section back through the boom area along with the wiring for the boom area's LED and run all the wires back out through the hole at the rear of the boom area. Once you've got your wires in place, carefully attach the right and left sides of the forward section of the cruiser. Be sure you don't get any wires caught between the two halves when you're gluing them together. While the plastic welder bonding the halves of the front end of the cruiser set, I finished assembling the command section and then attached it to the top of the main hull. By the way, the two green domes that go on top of the command section were very badly molded in this particular kit. In fact, they were unusable. I cut the wire leads off two green 5mm LEDs and substituted them for the kit's parts. They're a bit out of scale, but they look okay anyway. Before I continue with the lighting details, I want to point out that you might have noticed I'm not mentioning when the exterior of the ship gets painted, because that's a build detail. However, I will say that the major areas like the boom section, the bridge section, and the aft section were painted before being assembled. Okay, now on to the next step in lighting this Klingon cruiser. The kit has two parts it calls lights that go under the warp nacelles. I replaced these two parts with working navigation lights using one red and one green 2 millimeter tube topped LEDs. To begin, of course, I blacked out both halves of each nacelle. Next, I widened the hole in the underside of the nacelles to fit the LEDs. This was a simple matter of clamping the two halves of each nacelle together and drilling out the locator hole where the plastic light part was supposed to go. I soldered thin wrapping wires to each LED lead, then covered the connections with heat shrink and installed an LED into each nacelle. Just to keep them from shifting around, I covered each set of wires with a piece of electrical tape. Once the LEDs were installed, I joined the left and right halves of each nacelle. The nacelles attached to the aft hull by slipping them over a broad tab at the end of each wing. However, this is a tight fit and the LED wires could be damaged or crushed when the nacelles are installed. To solve this problem, I simply used an X-Acto knife and cut a small notch into the end of each wing tab. Then I aligned the wires inside the notch and slipped the nacelle into place and welded it down. Hang in there folks, I'm coming to the last few steps. I decided to power my lighting system with a Duracell Type 28A 6 volt battery. If you don't like using odd sized batteries, you can also just use two AA cells. I don't happen to have a battery holder for the 6 volt unit I want to use, so I built my own. This isn't hard, it just takes a little time, a few pieces of plastic, and two strips of brass to use as electrical contacts. The following photos should give you a good idea of how to build your own battery holder if you ever need to make one that custom fits into a small space inside a model. In 
install your battery holder into the aft section of the cruiser's hull, lined up directly under the opening in the top half of the aft hull. The last step to complete your lighting setup is to add an on-off switch and connect all the wires from the LEDs to the battery and to the on-off switch. This is another good place to apply my invisible switch technique. Solder one end of a magnetic reed switch to the negative wire from the battery pack. Slide the wires from the front section of the cruiser through the hole at the front of the aft section and glue or weld the two sections together. Give the glue or welder time to fully cure. Solder the free lead from the reed switch to the negative wires from the LEDs, including the two negative wires from the navigation lights in the warp nasals. Then solder the positive wire from the battery holder to the positive wires from the LEDs. Again, be sure to include the two positive wires from the navigation lights. That completes your lighting circuit. Important note, a magnetic reed switch's glass housing is very fragile. Be sure to use heat shrink to reinforce the wire connections to the switch as shown in the photos. Otherwise, you could damage or destroy the switch when putting it in place. Don't worry about covering the switch with heat shrink because the magnetic force of even a small magnet will still turn the switch on. Test the circuit by moving a magnet close to the reed switch. Your LEDs should light up. Using hot glue, secure the reed switch to the inside of the top half of the aft hull section. I actually split my circuit and installed a second switch just to control the navigation lights. This isn't really necessary. You can use a single switch as described above. Give the hot glue time to fully harden. Then follow the kit's instructions and assemble the aft hull section. With one big exception. Assemble the impulse engine unit, but do not glue it in place. The impulse engine block serves as the cover to your battery compartment, so it has to be removable. Finalize any painting that remains to be done and apply the kit's decals. Bingo! You've got an illuminated Klingon battlecruiser to add to your model collection. I hope this video will inspire some novice modelers, or even a few old hands who haven't tried LED lighting before, to try enhancing their next science fiction model with some lighting effects. Basically, you can install lighting effects in any model from something as large as this 27-inch diameter C57D Star Cruiser to Polar Light's smaller C57D to something as small as this 5 inch tall model of the Luna rocket ship. All you need is a little patience, some imagination, some LEDs, and a power supply. Oh, and an on off switch. As always, I hope you've enjoyed my little presentation. Be sure to visit the SciFiDragon.net website, and thank you all for watching. Thank you.